Yo, what's going on guys? Nashra here, back with another video, and today I'm gonna be showing you my $10,000 gaming setup. If you tune into any of my streams, you guys have probably noticed the new background, the new place that I'm in. Well, a lot of you guys have wanted to see what my setup looks like. I've made a lot of adjustments since the last time I made a setup video, quite a few years ago. So today I'm gonna go through the full walkthrough and show you guys everything that I'm working with. So I hope you guys find this helpful. I'm gonna make sure to include a link to all the products that I talk about in the description below also be sure to hit the like button and look at this boys we are currently sitting at hold on we're currently sitting at 282,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel now we still have a decent ways to go before we hit the 300 but I think we can hit it before hockey season comes around so make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't all right without further ado let's go ahead and hop right into this thing you're gonna turn the lights on so you guys can actually see first thing you notice when you walk downstairs we have the RGB lights up here it doesn't seem like a lot but if you guys have noticed on my streams it does give a whole different vibe these lights are pretty dope I can control them from my phone look at this turn off lights pretty sick. So coming over to the setup, the first thing you're going to notice is the desk. This is an Arosi gaming desk. It's pretty large. As you can see, I've got three monitors comfortably sitting on the desk at all times and still plenty of room to work with. Also, another thing, this is a mouse pad. So the entire desk from front to back is covered in a mouse pad, meaning you don't need an extra mouse pad sitting around. I can pretty much go wherever I want to, no problems whatsoever. Speaking of the monitors, we do have three monitors here. So these two are actually Actually, Asus gaming monitors, 24 inches, 144 hertz, one millisecond response time, really good for gaming. The thing I've noticed is the bigger the TV or the monitor that you're using, the more lag you're gonna have, the less responsive it will be. So in my opinion, the best way to go if you're looking to pick up a new monitor, make sure you get a gaming monitor with that good refresh rate. Also, you're gonna want one that's smaller so you're not looking all over the screen trying to find where your guy is. This monitor over here is what I use for gaming. This one over here, I'll have the Twitch chat or watch YouTube videos on there and this one is where I do all of my video editing so this is an LG 27 inch 4k monitor that I use only for video editing and then obviously if I'm just browsing around but in terms of gaming 1080p is still the way to go in my opinion it's just nice having this monitor I have a little bit of extra space when I'm doing my editing and I need to bounce around in a lot of different dialogues you guys probably noticed the keyboard and mouse here I'm a big fan of the RGBs as you can probably tell this is the Razer or not a keyboard Board, and it allows you to fully customize it. You can change this to a few different lighting settings. I'm a big fan of just the classic wave here. Also, we have our mouse. This is a Logitech G502. Uh, nice and simple gaming mouse. It is a wired one. I know the wireless technology has gotten a lot better, but I've gotten used to this one and it's kind of just what I'm sticking with. One of my favorite parts of this setup for streaming specifically is the Elgato Stream Deck. Now, if you don't know what this is, it allows you to quickly change between scenes in OBS when you're streaming. So I can have one view of my webcam, which would be here, the camera I'm using now. It'll be on my face. I can then hit a button, it'll switch to the Xbox. I can hit another button, it'll switch to the PC. So I can always be bouncing around from scene to scene. Couple last things here on the desk. I have all of my controllers over here. I actually just recently got this sent to me from the guys over at Scuff. This is the Scuff Prestige controller. What's special about this is we have the paddles on the back that you can map to anything on your controller. Controller. So a couple of these paddles I have mapped to the A button over here and the left analog clicked in So I never have to take my hand off of my controller off the analogs when I'm playing Chell. Still playing around to see what I like best But overall this controller is very very nice. As for my microphone This is the Blue Yeti mic. A nice beginner mic. Honestly, it's not very expensive You don't have to spend a ton of money to have good audio quality I am looking to upgrade this somewhat soon, but it's one of those things you're gonna pay like maybe a hundred bucks for a decent mic and you'll be set if you want to go bigger and better than that it's kind of a minor upgrade over time but a great mic if you guys are looking to get into streaming definitely recommend the Blue Yeti headphones that I use these are the Barrow Dynamic DT 990s a huge fan of these this is like a proper studio setup pair of headphones as you can see really really comfortable I've had to wear these things for 24 straight hours during a 24 hour stream and, and honestly they did not feel uncomfortable in the slightest so here they are the DT 990s 
big fan of these. Now to get audio, it's a bit more of a challenge than you think. So this is the Astro A40 mix amp. It allows you to get audio from a couple different sources and have it come out of one single headphone. So my audio is coming from my Xbox up here to the Astro mix amp and into the headphones and also audio coming from my PC to the mix amp to my headphones. So it really allows you to get audio from your Xbox and your PC at the same time. You can listen to the stream, you can listen to Spotify, whatever you need to do, the Astro Mix Amp allows you to do it. Now let's move on to what powers this entire setup the PC. A lot of you guys are interested in this. This is an NZXT custom built PC. We have an i9 9900K CPU in there and a 2080 Ti graphics card. Pretty unnecessary for what I do. 32 gigs of RAM, but I wanted to go out and getting the best PC possible and I think we have finally done it. This thing is an absolute beauty. One thing to note before we get too far into this thing, if you guys are looking to get into YouTube or to start streaming on Twitter, Twitch, you don't need to spend a ton of money to get into it. Obviously with this setup, you guys see there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of expensive stuff, and I don't need all of this to get started. I've made small upgrades to my setup over time to allow it to be where it is right now, but honestly when I first started making videos, I was sitting there with an iPhone 4. That is what I was using to record everything, and you can do that too. Up here we have a giant ring light and there's a huge blank space. This right here is where the camera in my hand would usually be at so from my view this is what my face cam typically looks like it'd be me right there and then we have the ring light shining to get the best view possible so if we come over here and turn the lights off again the ring light is gonna give you a perfect light right on the chair where I'm sitting. So on me, it's nice and lit, but in the background, you can see you have that nice purple tint. So that's how I get the vibe that I get in my videos and in my streams. A Couple more things over here on the wall. I wanted to have these hanging so it wasn't just a cluster down low. We have an Xbox One X up top. This is what I mainly use. I also have a PS4 Pro that I use in tournaments and stuff like that. I still haven't decided for NHL 20 what I'm gonna go with. Am I going Xbox? Am I going in PS4? Put a comment down below. Let me know what I should play. Two key things I forgot before we move on. One, the Elgato HD60S is 100% what you need to get content from your Xbox to your PC. Mine is actually tucked down under here, but essentially your content is going from the Xbox to the HD60S, to the PC, and then outputting to your monitor. So that is how that works. That's how I get my gameplay and I'm able to record it. Last thing is my face cam. So the camera that I'm currently using is the Panasonic GH5. It is a very, very nice DSLR camera that I use as a face cam and to record my videos. Now how this works, there is a special contraption called the Cam Link, the Elgato Cam Link. It goes right here in your PC. That HDMI cable is gonna go up in two your camera, so my camera would sit right here. It's connected to my PC, and that's what I use. Definitely an underrated part of this setup right here. It doesn't seem like much. This makes a huge, huge difference. The acoustic panels right here. So you guys know, I'm sitting right here. I've got the microphone. If this was not covered in acoustic panels, a lot of the sounds would bounce off this wall, come back, hit the microphone, and cause a lot of distortion. So having these acoustic panels, they're not very expensive. You can hang them up anywhere. Make sure you get those if you have a lot of echo coming from your mic. Like if you have hardwood flooring or the walls are just bare and not covered, or like for me, there's not a ton of furniture out here, you need something to just grab the sound and prevent it from going back into your microphone. So that's what the acoustic panels do. I think that about covers all of the hardware that I use in my video. One last thing that I wanna mention before we move on, the cable management. I had a lot of questions about my cable management. Obviously, if you guys stand over here, I mean, look at the cables. There's nothing hanging down low. I have all sorts of cords that are going from the computer to the mic, to the computer, to the consoles. It's going all over the place. But I managed to get it under control pretty well. Now this right here is how I keep everything hidden. I remove this. This is where the surge protector is. This is where everything is getting plugged in. I have wrapped all of the extra cords into here. It's a bit of a mess. And we put this on top and boom, all your cables are gone. Now there's more to it than that. The other huge thing is you can see all of my cables from my PC are being routed into this sleeve. So I have a sleeve that rides all the way underneath my desk. Luckily enough, this desk does come with nets. So the sleeve sits in the netting, goes over to the consoles, and then there's simply one point 
going up there. Instead of it being like 50 different cables that are riding up the wall, it's one sleeve going all the way up. Looks much cleaner that way. You're gonna have to spend a lot of time playing around with that. I think I literally spent like six hours alone on the cable management for this setup when we moved. I wanted everything to look clean right when we moved in. I knew that this was gonna be the time to do it. So really, it's just a grind. You gotta sit down, take your time, and get the job done. That about covers the space that I game in. Now I'll take you guys to the back of the room. Obviously, this is still a bit of a work in progress. It's kind of empty over here, but on the wall, we have, first of all, the 100K play button. Thank you guys so much for making this all possible. Every single one of you that has hit subscribe is a reason that we have this plaque right here and the reason we're so close to 300K. So thank you guys so much for all the love. Moving on, we have a little neon hockey guy. Don't have him plugged in at the moment because I can't figure out how to hide the wires, but he kind of looks cool. And then an OG Blue Jackets poster. Day one, I was at this game, signed by all the OG Blue Jackets. Just a good little piece of memorabilia there. And looping over here, this is kind of the knickknacks. Just whatever extra stuff I could find. Some candles that we sometimes let, you know, we're chilling, we're chilling. And my favorite part of the entire basement, look at this. This is a seven foot bean bag. It's huge. Anytime I'm over here grinding away, 10 hour days, whatever, we swoop over here and uh, you know, quick nap, we got the blanket, whatever. Also, I just got these shoes today, so I have to show these off for a brief second. The SpongeBob Kyrie's, Squidward's, Patrick's. Make sure you go to my Instagram, at the Nash 61 for a full look at those. They're unreal. Oh yeah, and then one last uh, piece of art here. This tree, it changes seasons as you walk around the room. Tell me that's not sick. As for the programs that I use most on a daily basis, first and foremost, this is Premiere Pro. This is what I use to edit all of my videos. This is just a standard GoPro hockey video here. You can see there's quite a few cuts, quite a few different things that we do. Premiere Pro, definitely the most difficult software to use, but it has literally everything that you could ever imagine in it. Moving on, we have Photoshop, which is what I used to make this thumbnail that you clicked on. And finally, OBS Studio, which allows me to stream, and with the Stream Deck, like I mentioned, I can cycle through these different scenes while I'm streaming. So if you guys ever see me switch, that is how that's happening. OBS allows you to do everything you need to do when you are live streaming. I believe that is a full rundown of my $10,000 gaming setup, but there is something that I wanna show you upstairs as well. I wanna show you the training area, where I record some of my videos, where I've been shooting some of my Instagram videos, upstairs, outside. So I'll meet you guys out there now. All right, here we are. This is what the outdoor setup is looking like. If you guys have not seen this, I'm a huge fan of the hockey shot setup. Look at this beauty. Down here we have the hockey shot tiles. I just got a nice and simple three by three. I have a lot more that I could use. I'm thinking about one day potentially filling this entire area with the synthetic skating tile so I can actually go for a skate out here. If you wanna see that, hit the video with a like. Now, as we approach the tarp, this is the Hockey Shot Extreme Shooting Tarp. It covers your garage from left to right, top to bottom. There is no chance of a single puck breaking through this thing. The garage door is 100% open, as you can see, and when pucks hit it, it completely stops them. So I can give it a punch, nothing's getting through that. So as you can probably tell, this is a great place to shoot content. Sometimes I just come out here and shoot 100, 200 pucks a day. Also, I think it may have just started pouring. So we gotta make this quick. I mean, I can't come out here and not rip a couple shots, right? I got like five, six pucks lined up here. Let's, uh, let's go for a quick rip. Let me set this camera down. There we go, let's rip some quarters. That's a shooting tarp. Don't get me wrong, shooting on the tarp is fun and I need that tarp here to protect my garage, but I think at some point, I'm gonna get a net here as well so we have the net in front, shooting tarp to protect behind, and then I can just rip pucks at the net and uh, hopefully not dent up the garage too much. But that is the outdoor setup. Okay, as you can probably hear, it's starting to really come down here, so I'm gonna get inside before this camera gets ruined. I'll meet you guys back downstairs for the outro. Let's go. We're going. Are you kidding me? Down. <laughs> Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the full setup tour from inside to outside. This is everything I do 
to make the videos that you guys see on a daily basis. If you guys did enjoy this video or found it helpful in any way, make sure you hit the video with a like. Also, hit that subscribe button. We are getting so close to 300,000 subs. I'm trying to hit it before the NHL season starts up. I think we have a chance. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for all the love as always. We'll see you guys next time and peace.